Hey guys, today we are going to be talking about what it is you need to do in order to keep you and more importantly, your family and the people around you safe when you are airbrushing indoors. Now, a lot of you guys, like me, probably airbrush within your home. There's a whole lot of people out there if you're doing more art type stuff, but most likely you are airbrushing within your, in your home or in a garage or an attached environment to your house. Me, I actually happen to have a secondary area which I paint in and it's this area here and it's not completely set up so i've got some temporary spray situations set up. So the question becomes how do you know how much airflow you need how much filtration you need do you need to exhaust outside can you recirculate air inside and we're going to go over the answers to all that hey guys i am bill kennedy with wlean artistry and i am an airbrush artist i'm a full-time artist i airbrush primarily but i do dabble with some other things and atomizing paint is what we do on this channel first thing if you are working with a solvent based, especially urethanes, I highly and strongly encourage you never to airbrush indoors. And if you are, hopefully you'd be airbrushing in a detached environment. And I'll be going over how to calculate the CFM requirements that you need to do. What that. about the rest of us? What can we do to minimize the impact of dust and, you know, the overspray? keep it to a minimal and keep it from getting in our homes and also in our lungs so that we can stay safe and spray for a long time. And I'll be time. going over how to calculate the CFM requirements that you need to do. First thing, despite the fact that you see a lot of us guys who are on YouTube and that we are live streaming, you see us painting without a mask quite often. That does not mean you do not need one. Everybody should be using an, at least an N95 mask like this or similar at all times when they are airbrushing. And this is why you see us not using these when we're live streaming because you know it looks really funny and it muffles our voice quite a lot. And that's why you see a lot of us, but almost all of us who do that have a great airflow system set up to protect ourselves. Are all the complaints made of myself, masks, you know, kind of bother you wearing them for a long period of time, things like that. If you are completely uncomfortable using a mask like this or using a respirator type style mask. They make these, we call them duckbill masks. These are N95 masks as well that go on, but they leave a much bigger open area and you can breathe much easier through these. I get these from my wife because she works at a hospital, wears a mask all day, every single day, all day, every single day. Everybody in there has to all day. So, it is very possible to wear a mask while you're- I will drop you guys a link for those masks. I'm not trying to make money. I just want you to be safe. You can find them locally. And if you can find them locally, that's great. And if you are spraying with solvents, you should be using a mask with an organic, you know, that filters out organic vapors. You can 3M is what I usually use. I don't have any of them masks around right now because some of you guys know we've been remodeling the house. I don't know where half my stuff right. is. So a lot of people recommend you get you a box fan and a filter and put it on that fan. And that will work fine if you have a way to put that fan and that filter right near where you're working, but you still need to pay attention to what the MERV, M-E-R-V rating of your filter is to make sure it's actually getting enough of the particulates out of it. MERV rating do you need? I'll go over that in just now. Now I've got this four inch inline fan is what I'm using. And actually I have also this carbon filter that sometimes I will put this on on the carbon filter to also filter out some of the organics that get in from the reducers I'm using, which are not regular solvent based reducers, but there's still some organic now, compounds. That fan is variable speed up to 200 CFM. And I will drop you guys a link for the one that I'm using, but you need to kind of shop around with those because they change price a whole lot. Because of the explosion of pot growers, these carbon fans and filters are very easy to come by. Now, how do I decide what size fan I needed? Well, we can calculate based on the cubic footage of the room. puppy dog out of the way. Okay, regulations for spray booth. There's two regulations in which they talk about for spray booth. One, the old code used to be 100 linear feet per minute. And the newer code is four air exchanges per 
minute. Now, those are the requirements when you're dealing with flammable vapors for when you're dealing with spray booth environments where you're going to be clear coating, you're going to be using solvents and things like that. But we can also use that to calculate for our just dust and things like that, only we can cut that number back significantly. So how do we get these calculations? If you were going to calculate based on liter, linear feet per minute, you would take the size of your booth on the end, right? Say that is 10 foot by 10 foot. To be able to calculate the linear feet per minute, you would multiply this 10 foot by this 10 foot, which would give you 100 square feet times 100, which would be 10,000 CFM. So for you guys that are spraying in your garage and think that little, two of those little fans like that are enough, it's not. Now for simplicity, let's say your room is going to be 10 foot by 10 foot this way and 10 foot deep. It's going to be 1,000 cubic feet. And I can't help you guys how to convert that to meters over there across the pond and everywhere else in the world except for the United States. Now to get four air exchanges, you multiply that by four and it would be 4,000 CFM or cubic feet. Oh, those are some crazy high numbers, aren't they? Especially when I just told you I have a 200 cubic feet per minute fan. Well, the reality is, when you're not dealing with flammable vapors, i.e. you're not painting solvents, you're not gonna need quite this. If you were, and that is also planning on your spraying with a spray gun. We're not painting with a spray gun. We are airbrushing, it's a lot smaller stuff. We don't have to deal with near, near as much. I calculate my, I calculate based upon the 100 linear feet per minute based across the sizing of the filter that I'm going to use. Actually, in this case, it would be 100 because this is a one square foot filter that I'm using up there. I plan on it being two square foot very soon. And this is just temporarily rigged up. Do you need those filters if you're going to be exhausting outdoors? Well, no, you're not going to need all that filter if you're gonna be exhausting outdoors. But when it's 30 degrees outside, you're probably not gonna open up a door and run a fan and you're gonna get uncomfortable. So you're gonna close the door and not be filtering. So I am recirculating my air during quite a lot of period of time. Give you an idea, all of that was captured in two panels. Now what I do is I actually capture this air. It goes through that tube and it actually exhausts out over here. And I usually keep this MERV 12 field filter with my box fan just blowing out of that room. So I have that filtered and, and shooting air that way it keeps it right off of the easel and shoots through here. And this filter, even though it's not been directly painted next to, you can see that it's already becoming discolored. So it's capturing a lot more dust. All right, so MERV ratings, and I encourage you to go look them up. But anyway, as a brief rundown, MERV one through six really isn't gonna do much to protect your lungs. MERV one through six would be designed as a pre-filter. It would what be what you would use as a spray booth inlet filter, and it's good to protect your fans, keep the dust buildup from getting onto your fans. So if you were exhausting the outside, you would still wanna put some form of filter before that fan. You could do something like a one through six. If you weren't using solvents, you need to capture those solvents if you're spraying solvents. MERV, Above that, when you get up to about MERV 12 is when you start getting into fine particulates and that's probably the sweet spot in which you wanna be. So this being a MERV 12 filter, it captures a lot of particulates into really, really small size. So it even is, is capturing stuff that's getting through that first filter, which is actually like a MERV 10. And I got these at my local box store. On top of that, I also actually have a four inch thick filter on my AC unit now, which is a MERV 15, I believe, which is very on the upper end, but it had to be much thicker so that it didn't decrease the airflow. Above that, you get into HEPA filters, which are usually too strong for generally most fans. The reason I did that is because I've gotten really, really serious about making sure there's no dust when I remodel the house because we're going through a lot of drywall, things like that. And I wanted to keep the drywall dust to a minimum and I wanted to keep my studio much cleaner than what I had in the past, and it would get very, very dusty with my old filtration system. So with the MERV 12 filter that I'm running right now and the filter over my 
you know, over directly over my easel, it really keeps the dust out of the environment and the air, which is really, really important. And again, your filter, your mask for your face is going to be your first line of defense to protect your health immediately. But the other dust, getting that out of that environment is good for you and will help with your allergies and things like that. So all of that other stuff is combined is to protect my home, my family, people that are also in the area of working, not directly exposed to those, you know, to the overspray. Like these guys right here, those, as you guys might already know, are very, very important to us. <laughs> Can't realize that's very, very ghetto, but anyway, for those that are interested, this is just a piece of foam core and cut into a box shape and then taped with, you know, taping for ductwork to build my box. So anything you have, your box doesn't have to be anything, you know, fancy, obviously. Mine's not. And if you're doing minis, a little tabletop, those little tabletop spray booths, those will be fine for if you're just doing little tabletop minis and that's all you're going to work on. But, you know, those tabletop minis really just don't work out for us that are trying to do panels and art and bigger pieces. All right, guys, I'm Bill Kennedy with the Aerospace. And remember, whether you are working with a spray gun, whether you are working with an aerosol can, or whether you are working with an airbrush, remember to atomize that. Y'all have a good one. We will catch you on the next one. Bye.